I'm five years old. My mom dresses me up nicely in my school uniform. I'm wearing my navy blue shorts, light blue shirt and tie. She combs my hair, ties it in a bun, and covers it with a turban. Not quite like the turban I wear today, but almost like a do-rag that makes the outline of my bun, my juda, visible. My grandfather drops me off at the bus stop, and, um, and right after he leaves, the boys at the stop surround me, hold my juda in their hands, and try and rip it apart like it's a dirty old rag. Is that a tomato on your head? Is that, is that an egg? What if I smash it? Will it break? And this would happen day after day. And every day I would come back home and cry to my mom and ask her, why do I look different? Why can't I be normal like everyone else? And my mom would say, Beta, we are six. The turban is a part of our identity. Our long, uncut hair is a part of our identity. It represents existing in the natural form that God created us in. It is a gift given to us by our gurus. And who are you to try and blend in when you were born to stand out? There were two more things my mom told me that day that gave me strength and comfort in who I was. One, if you're better at something than everyone else, everyone will want to learn from you and not hurt you. And two, always fight for your right, but know that you can't change everyone. So for those who are willing to learn, educate them about your faith with love and compassion. So that's what I did. I started standing up for myself when I needed and started studying as hard as I could. To my surprise, the same people who used to pull my hair and turban at the bus stop would now come to me asking for help with their homework. This defense mechanism of working hard to protect myself compounded over the next 12 years and had a nice side effect that led me to getting admitted in a top five computer science program in America. And I was as American as I could be while still being Indian. I could quote friends at the drop of a hat. I'd heard enough Backstreet Boys to give anyone a run for their money. And I was ready for America to beam me up, Scotty. A brand new start. A place where I can be accepted for who I am, just like Lady Liberty says. I was going to school in Philly, and by that first night, everyone was talking about the first parties of the year on 35th and Powelton. And my experience of American parties was shaped strongly by my multiple viewings of American Pie. I dressed up looking my fashionable best. I combed and oiled my beard, put on my nicest looking turban, and showed up at the townhouse overflowing with freshmen with red solo cups in their hands, just like American Pie. But as someone who doesn't drink, it didn't take me long to realize that house parties were just not my scene. So as I tried to leave uh, and from the crowded entryway, a, a girl stopped me and said, can I ask you a question? Me? Y yes. Are you a terrorist? She said it so unironically that I just stood there dumbstruck for a second. Like Christina said, we are not taught how to react in situations like these. She was, she was genuinely asking me out of curiosity, are you a terrorist? And this assault on my identity continued in subtle but mostly not so subtle ways. Every so often a car would drive by and the driver would shout, fuck you, Osama, or goddamn raghead. One time I was stopped at the airport because TSA thought that the jar of pickles I was carrying was an improvised explosive device. And then there was this time when I was waiting for the next bus when a red Jeep slows down near me, the back window rolls down, and the person inside throws a crumpled cigarette box at me and drives away. I stood there shaking because it felt like I couldn't be safe anywhere. A year later, on August 5th, 2012, the Sikh community of Oak Creek, Wisconsin had gathered together at the Gurdwara for their weekly prayers, just like Sunday church. The prayer was to be followed by Langar, the community kitchen where everyone, regardless of religion, gender, sexual orientation, is welcome to a free meal. When Wade Michael Page, an ex-army veteran, walked into the temple with a legally purchased 9mm semi-automatic pistol and opened fire on the men, women, and children gathered there. He killed six people before shooting himself. 
It was later revealed that he was a white supremacist and often talked about an impending racial holy war. The media insisted that his motives remained unclear and that the mystery had died with him, but ask any Sikh or Muslim and the motive seems obvious. So maybe it is true. We can't be safe anywhere. The question then is, if I feel so unsafe in America, what has kept me here for nine years? Why continue to stay? It's because despite its imperfections, America, like all of us, is a work in progress. It is also the kind of country that gives people like us opportunity. You know how they say you cannot be what you cannot see? I don't have to look too much further than my own family to see the results of the opportunity America provides in the form of my two uncles who came here before me, built successful companies, and lived beautiful lives with their families. Yes, there is the occasional verbal abuse. Fortunately, no physical abuse. But I get through it because I realize that it's only 0.5% of the people doing the shouting. The other 99.5% are on my side. And look, given the state of the world today, maybe I'm too optimistic or maybe I'm too naive to think that the 99.5% are with me. But I'd rather believe and live in an America that I know is on my side and than be in one that is overrun by bigots and assholes. And like my mom said, you can't change everyone. But for those who are willing to learn, educate them with love and compassion. And hey, I'm more than happy to talk because when you look like I do, it's a great conversation starter.